So, Michael, thank you very much for inviting us here. To oh, my, my pleasure. Gallery. Glad to have you. Las Vegas. Can you tell us a little bit about how you decided to open this beautiful gallery? Well, I've been collecting photography for about 30 years. Mm. And it's a passion of mine, and I, I just love it. So, f for the last few years, I had always wanted to be a gallerist. That was like a fantasy of mine. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, uh, I put on some shows in Vegas in the 80s of some younger artists, uh, mostly printmakers. And it was so much fun to do, but then I had to get serious and go do other things in life. <laughs> so, uh, I was run, you know, I was thinking about it and I just said to myself, you know what, you're running out of time. Yeah. If you're going to do this, do this now. So uh, I said, I'm going to do it. And so this is how it came about. When you started off back in the 80s uh, up to the present day, has there been a dramatic shift in art in Vegas? Do you feel it, there's a different openness to it now? I think there's an openness to it. Um, because you know people travel so much now and they mm -hmm. take their kids on european vacations and you know they always obviously when you go to paris you have to see the louvre and the d'orsay and in london you go to the tate and then yes. like 10 other huge museums mm -hmm. and you know parents are always taking their kids so you know they're exposing themselves uh, to art mm -hmm. uh, but you know there really hasn't been an art scene in vegas i mean now you know, it's at its uh, infant stages. I mean, you see there's some nice galleries I in the Arts District downtown, and that's about it, other than, you know, the galleries in the Haute Casino properties yes. that sell, yeah. you know, mass market, uh, nice art, but it's more mass market. More commercial. Yeah, more commercial yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I think there's a willingness there, but it's something that's going to take a while to develop and you have to educate people. And that's why I think photography will work. Uh, you know, if you're gonna buy a painting now, a good young painter uh, with the craziness in the art market, uh, it's gonna cost you thirty to $50,000. Yes. And there aren't that many people in Vegas who are gonna spend that on art uh, at this point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's three or four serious collectors uh, but there are a lot of people with huge homes with a lot of blank walls. So uh, my mission is to fill those walls up. Well, that's a lofty mission. It's great. Yeah. Um, when you look at this gallery, um, you, you're almost taken into, uh, you know, anywhere in Europe or Chelsea or New York. Or, but there's something very unique about the way in which you've curated the gallery. Did you do that yourself personally, or, or do you work with somebody? It almost seems like you're taking on a, a beautiful... You mean for the shows? For the shows. Well, yeah. I have a totally different model, mm. because this isn't... I, I don't do this to make a living. Yes. I do it because I enjoy it, and I make my living from other things. Um, I wouldn't care if I ever sold anything, <laughs> as long as I could expose people to the art. Right. But I do want, I do want to sell uh, to, so I can help support the artists that I'm, yes. I'm showing. But my model differs in the fact that I don't have to cultivate the artists. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a normal gallery goes out and signs artists and represents artists. What I did was I started talking to the galleries that I had been a customer of for 30 years. Mm. And, uh, you know, I knew gallery owners and gallery directors in uh, primarily in Los Angeles and New York. And I said, look, I've been buying f from you for years. Uh, Vegas, I think Vegas would be a really cool market to try and penetrate. Um, why don't we do shows together? Mm -hmm. So I end up making less money, uh, but I have access to the top galleries and their list of clients. So, I mean, this is, uh, we're sitting in the middle of my third show. So we did three shows this year and all did well. 
uh, they sold well, and the ga my gallery partners were very excited uh, about the sales, as were the artists. So it was a win-win. It's, yeah. it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. Have you a personal relationship with France? Because it seems that this beautiful exhibit, Paris in, in Love, is, is, is something that's very personal to you. Well, I go to Paris every year and I love Paris. Mm. And everybody loves Paris. So, mm. well, most people love Paris. Uh, at least physically the city. Some people don't like French right. people. <laughs> I happen, I, I happen to, and I have a lot of friends there. Um, and you know, Paris is the most beautiful, to me, the most beautiful city in the world. And it's very romantic. And you know, it's like uh, a Woody Allen movie, like yes. uh, Midnight in Paris, you know? Yes, yeah. Um, and it just has that amazing quality. And I think that, you know, uh, we picked a show that uh, transcends that feeling uh, so we're bring, bringing the romanticism of Paris, you know, to our little patch of desert here. I also feel there's something in the French spirit that's a little bit rebellious. Yes. Is there something endemic to your personality that has that type of out-of-the-box thinking and how you do business, or? No, I mean, I'm not, I don't consider myself rebellious. Mm -hmm. I, I, I consider myself a creative person. Mm -hmm. So I just try to, um, use my creativity to achieve my goals. Um, and again, I love photography. I have a really nice collection. And, uh, you know, it's a way for me to share that passion. And if it didn't work, mm -hmm. you know, that the jury's still out on that. I mean, I've had a good first year, sure. and I've only scratched the surface of reaching uh, the number of people I want to reach. Yes. Yeah. Um, but if, if it doesn't work, I got this great space and uh, my house and my condo here are chock full of photography mm. and there's no more wall space. So now I can wow. keep collecting and just house my collection here. <laughs> as you have this relationship, with, as you were saying, with the galleries and, and with their, their top talent, a lot of artists at this period in time in history are not necessarily struggling creatively, but they are struggling. Is there any advice that you would offer people right now who are in the creative field, who do have a lot of work, but just feel a little bit um, lost or losing hope or? Boy, I'm not that big an expert mm. uh, from that point of view, but um, my opinion, uh, the greatest asset that an unknown artist has is the internet mm, mm. and you know even i started a uh instagram page for uh the salon here mm -hmm. and a lot of people started following uh the salon because they were following a lot of the artists that i've had here yeah, so and a lot of those people were photographers mm. and it is absolutely amazing mm. how many of those people I had never heard of who have fantastic work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a great source is uh, the internet and yeah. from an artist wanting to get their work seen mm -hmm. outside of a gallery thing. And I know there are some apps now that they can try sell their stuff on. Um, but just use that and, 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 and follow people so they can see your work. Uh, I'll give you a quick story. Mm -hmm. So I opened, uh, I mean, my main business is hospitality uh, company. Uh, I just opened a restaurant here in Vegas, a, mm. a Mexican restaurant. Mm. And the designer, I, I, we had a lot of wall space. So I, I was talking to the design, uh, designer and I said, I want to do four big photographs on these two walls, two on each wall. So they sent me ideas and they just didn't get it. So mm. it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted street scenes, Mexico City, covering music, food, uh, lifestyle, uh, all, you know, different things. And they, they sent me pictures that just were uninspiring. 
So I said, forget it, I'll do it myself. So I was, because I follow uh, a lot of photography uh, galleries and artists, you know, the algorithm always sends me stuff. Tons of new stuff. To look at, right. you know, when, on that search page thing. Uh, so I saw a photographer, a young guy who lives in Mexico City. Oh, wow. And he's, he, all his work was street scenes in Mexico City. So I reached out to him through Instagram and I was able to buy four images of his for very little money. And he was thrilled to make the sale. Never spoke to him. Wow. We conducted the whole conversation on Instagram, through Instagram, and then I just Venmo, uh, PayPal'd him the money. Mm -hmm. He sent me uh, the files, and then we blew them up, and they're on the uh, restaurant walls, and people love it. Oh, so he nice. was able to, yeah. I found him, but he was able to make the sale with no gallery, no phone calls, no nothing. No art. Never theory, met no him. He lives in Mexico yeah. City. Yeah. I live in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was cool. And I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, to do things like that. Using social technology. Yeah. 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 It's a way for them. That's a great story. Yeah. And all you got to do is search. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I did an interview or we did a thing after the first, second show. And I said, you know, photography is an instant reaction. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, you know, so they said, well, how do you know to buy a picture? I said, if you walk in the room mm -hmm. and that picture speaks to you, it's yours. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my motto. If it speaks to you, then it's for you. And is, is that uh, you can do that just looking at Instagram. So when you're looking at a photograph, do you have a, this was going to ask you actually, do you have an emotional reaction to that or is it also an intellectual reaction as well? Mo it, to me it's always, um, uh, I'm not very intellectual, but I'm, I, I be emotional. <laughs> okay. So I, it's always emotional to me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to overthink it. I mm -hmm. can walk into a place and, with a thousand photographs and I go to, you know, what appeals to me emotionally. Uh, and some of my favorite pieces that I own were like, I walked into a New York gallery mm -hmm. to see a show mm -hmm. and I saw that piece and it just spoke to me. And I'm not one of those people who says, well, let me think about it. I'll do this, I'll do that. You know, yes. it's right yeah. then and then I said, okay, can I afford it? Yeah, okay, I want it. So, because you have that emotional connection to the piece. Yes, <clears throat> Jung would probably say that that's instinctive too though. You mightn't be that you're, you're funny. It's, it could also be the way you do business as well, but you're probably quite fast when it comes to how you conduct business as well. Yeah, that's how I get into serious trouble. I, uh, <laughs> I don't take my time making decisions. Well, and, well. and you know, more often than I care to, well, more often I, I've made too many mistakes by acting too quickly, so. Yeah, but clearly you've also been you know, successful. So yeah. um, it's like, it's, it's endemic to you. Um, next year, we're hoping to do an event based around art and mental health. And a lot of people right now are going through anxiety and, and, and depression. And it, it has been going on a lot in the artistic community. Do you feel that like the city of Las Vegas is ready to grow up a little? Instead of it always being about, you know, escapism, it seems to me that you're bringing a very intellectual dimension Sure, I think it's right. I mean, you know? I mean, look, look, uh, look at the Smith Center. Yes. Uh, yeah. I didn't think that was going to work here, and mm. it's a huge success, mm. and people love it. And you know, yeah, you, you get theater there, you get musicals there, you get dramatic plays there, and people can't get enough of it. So I, you know, I think that shows that there's there's hope for our little oasis here. And, you know, um, I, I, I think people want to see art. And yes, yes. It's just, you know, finding the right art and then getting them to make the commitment to at least come and look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, my mission is just to get people here. Yes, yes. Whether they buy it, that's up to them. Yes. I mean, I can, you know, 
a, a car salesman can you know push you push you push you because mm -hmm. he knows you need a car mm -hmm. no one needs a photograph mm -hmm. or a painting mm -hmm. you know people have to want it and they're the ones that make that decision not the art dealer now there's people with clients you know very wealthy who collect in a big time gallerist will say you know you have to have that painting you know it's a great price and this is you know mm -hmm. fantastic you know then you feel the pressure okay i think i need to buy this because he's hasn't steered me wrong before but you know i don't exhibit that kind of you know you're not going to come in here and say well i can get this jackson pollock for 32 million and right. it's a great right. price yeah you know right. um but here you know i just want them to come right you know, just, tr you know, it's funny. I, I get angry, I, uh, not angry, I get disappointed when I invite people I've known forever and th they haven't come here yet. Wow. But then every summer I see that on their Facebook or Instagram, they're in front of a world class museum in a European capital. Yes, and I yeah. can't get them to drive 15 minutes just to come look. Mm -hmm. on the way to dinner or after di you know it's crazy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think maybe um also i mean i've done a good few shows myself i think it's it, it goes back to what you said about almost being an education issue yeah that if there's a difference in the perception they will come so i think that it's just by turning up and doing shows again and again and sooner or later they're going to walk in to your gallery you know yeah, you know, this isn't a gallery town. Mm -hmm. It's not like in New York where you go yeah. and, with a friend and you're in Chelsea and you say, all right, let's have lunch and then we'll go, you know, walk some streets and see 10 galleries mm -hmm. or 57th Street or Upper East Side. Here, I, I, I get very little traffic, you know, coming to the gallery on a day almost none sure so here I do it differently you know people in Vegas love events mm -hmm. okay so during the run of a show I do an opening which you know I met you at and yes. that was very well attended yes and we were crazy busy that I think a beautiful we, show I think yeah. we sold 28 pieces Lord, that wow. night Fantastic. and you know when I told uh, some of my uh, my friends who have galleries mm -hmm. in New York mm -hmm. said, yeah, I sold 28 pieces. They were shocked. Mm -hmm. They say, We've, that's never happened mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. So, but that could be it for the run of the show. But what I do now is do an opening and a closing and something with a friend of mine who co-presents to bring people in oh, that cool. I might not know. Right. Uh, so, so I have three events for the run of the, at least three. Mm -hmm. a beginning middle and end so uh, it gives people all right so they they had a hockey tickets or a concert mm -hmm. or they had to go to a, a school to in, parent mm -hmm. teacher interviews mm -hmm. at least they can say okay I missed the opening but I can come to this or that so that's the way I do it here that's great because it's also almost like a little story as well yes it's like a, the exhibit has its own little story and then people who missed it yeah. they yeah. I, I was with a friend yesterday he goes sorry i was traveling for business but i heard the show was great mm -hmm. i said great so we have two more events coming up and i texted him the invitations and that's great. you know so that, that's the way it, that's my model here so far that's terrific what's the most frustrating thing for you as a as a gallery owner or collector or I like I said I just said the the frustrating part is just getting people to come okay like I said I don't care if they buy that's up to them mm -hmm. I mean some will buy and like I said I love to send checks to the artists um, I just want them to come and that's the most frustrating thing just to actually turn up <laughs> yeah now I love art so yeah whatever and I travel overseas extensively Mm -hmm. Wherever I go, I always look what shows are in town mm -hmm. at the museums, what galleries are showing what. And, you know, I'll see, I'll go to Paris for a week and I'll see two, three museums and five to ten galleries. Wow, terrific. You know, yeah. so I, I'm just yeah. trying to get people 
to want to go and just see it. Just to turn out. Just to turn out. That's, you know. that's the only thing that frustrates me. So when you're selecting a photographer for all the um, aspiring photographers out there, is it again, it's an emotive, emotional reaction to their work that you have? If they, they want to submit to you or they want to try to... I think you have to balance, um, you have to balance out what you like mm -hmm. and what you think the client's, the perspective uh, show goers will like. Uh, and again, we're in the beginning of a long race to develop these cultural aspects in Las Vegas. Yes, yes. So I've, I've already learned by my third show mm -hmm. that you should have pieces there for everybody to buy. Mm. So, you know, uh, I look for stuff within certain price range, parameters. And then I do, like you had asked me earlier, emotional or intellectual. Mm -hmm. I try to work with artists where you don't have to think about the art, but you have the emotional connection to the art. Because uh, if it's difficult, if it's difficult to understand, then that's too much, you know. Yeah, I just want it to be right now pleasing, beautiful, good work. And then as you develop your customer base and, and they become more knowledgeable about mm -hmm. photography, then you can start doing more challenging shows. And it, it, interesting, the second show, uh, I had an artist who's one of the foremost uh, photographers of nude figures. Mm. Okay, beautiful works. Mm -hmm. I mean, in 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 many museum co collections. Mm -hmm. So I did the show here, and I was shocked at the reaction mm. that people were so. F a lot of people were freaked out by the nudity. Really or felt very uncomfortable, which was odd to me since we live in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and you see billboards going down the strip with naked girls direct to your room and there's 10 topless shows in yes. town. Yes. And you know, this is the adult playground. Mm -hmm. I mean, not in the suburbs where mm -hmm. they come from, mm -hmm. but I thought there would be a more liberal Yes. Yeah. View of nudity in the arts because it was beautiful pieces, mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't pornographic at yes, all. Yeah. But I, I was a little taken back by the reaction. Do you think that had something to do with it being an American, uh, predominantly American audience or American clientele that came? Yeah, it was ninety nine point nine percent American. Wow. Um, but like I said. It's not like the show was in the middle of America or in the right. Bi down south in the right. Bible Belt. It was in Las Vegas. It's in Las Vegas, yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 So that really did surprise me. Yeah, I find that very surprising as well. Wow. Did any of those pieces move? Did it, was there any? Yes, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, actually, I take that back. Uh, we sold four pieces so oh, from that great. show, but none of them were nude works. Oh, wow, fascinating. So yeah. again, that's you trying to as well ascertain your clientele as well, and your yeah. audience, I guess. Yeah, now I did buy one of the nude works outside the entrance to the salon, because right. it's a beautiful work, so. Well, maybe it's because though you have that. Yeah. Um, you know, you've, you have a, a more of a global... Yeah, and it, people seem to forget that if you look at the paintings from the Renaissance, mm -hmm. it's all naked women and Jesus. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and, and then when you go into uh, the Impressionists, you know, the most famous painters in the world, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Renoir and Manet and Monet and Pissarro and, uh, you know, a lot of nudity, but, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's fine, but, you know, photography, ooh, you know. Have you had a lot of support 
um, even from your business side over the years, how important has support been? I mean, to do an endeavor like this, you must have some great people around you to either support you emotionally or just physically doing all the work. Or I always wonder about you know gallerists who you know you, do you have a team of people or do you do a lot yourself? Uh, it's me and uh, my, my CFO of my business company. She loves art, and so she helps me. Wow. So it's basically the the two of us. But the support comes from the people who come and say, wow, this is really cool. So that's great emotional support. Mm -hmm. What about from the city of Las Vegas? Has e there been any support or? No, the, uh, again, we're so new. So new I, my yeah. first show was in January and we're okay. sitting here at the end of October. And you know, like I said, words getting out mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. um, it does take a while. It yeah. takes a while. It does, it does. Can we're I, just at the start line of this race. Yeah, what an exciting start line though. So can I ask you what's next for the gallery in the next couple of months? Um, not much. Mm. Uh, this is our last show of the year. Okay. Uh, because, uh, you know, one, how long have you been here? Um, in, our, in and out of Las Vegas, uh, two, three years. Yeah. Okay, so you, as you live here longer, you realize that um, people, especially people who can afford to buy art and a lot of art, mm -hmm. always, I mean, as they love Las Vegas, but they all, a lot of them have second homes or yeah, we were just discussing that or, or travel. Yeah. 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 So nobody's here. Between <laughs> there are a lot of dead periods here. Yeah. So, you know, f from Thanksgiving to the end of the year, mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. People go away for Thanksgiving. Once the kids are out of school, they go to their homes in Laguna and Newport, mm -hmm. Montana, Wyoming, Utah, gone. So there's no reason to do a show at that time of the year. Mm -hmm. And then I, I learned this year that, you know, past the middle of May, people, st it starts getting hot. Yes. And yeah. when it gets hot, people leave town. Yes, they exit. And so again, <laughs> they go to the beach, they go to the mountains, yeah. gone. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. So you, you have to find that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, this year we did three shows. That's great. Um, yeah. And we'll probably do three to four next year. Terrific. Yeah, so I, I, I'm working on some interesting uh, concepts for shows, uh, and I'll be working on that f uh, through the rest of this year uh, and figuring out what I want to do next year. And everything changes because uh, people are in the art world, are s especially the photography That's art photography, world, yeah. Yeah. are starting to hear about this little salon. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to call this a salon because I, I modeled it after the salon of uh, Louis XIV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, where people came to see the arts and to sit down. That's why I have the round, the round table, table in here. Yeah. People yeah. can come in and have a discussion about mm -hmm. art. And even uh, during the shows, I keep the chairs in here so people can rest and sit down and have a conversation about what they're looking at. Um, yes, there's an atmosphere yeah. in here that it, it's very welcoming. Yeah. It, it, it's very uh, comforting. You know, it's not your traditional, you know, highbrow gallery where you're walking around yeah. and you, know, you can sit down and have a conversation. So that's why I call it a salon. And, uh, yes, yeah. and one of my heroes was the uh, photographer and gallerist, uh, Alfred Stieglitz. Mm. And he had a, an amazing uh, salon, two of them in New York, York yeah. in the 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where he introduced America to modern arts, you know, because like at, at that time, America, the rich people were buying, you know, European masters. And mm -hmm. when the modern artists uh, like Picasso and Mondrian and, you know, those people start coming. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and his, his, his protege and soon-to-be wife, George O'Keefe, mm -hmm. you know, people just didn't get it and they no. trashed it. You know, yeah. people always do that. But he had this, he called it uh, an American place, I believe it was, and he always referred to it as a salon. Mm. So I, since I'm really not open to daily traffic here, I like calling, uh, that's why it's called Fast 44, Fry Boy Art Salon. Oh, really? So that's okay. where the name comes from. Okay. And I use 44 because that's the address here. And it just sounded cool, like a, a, a German art pop-up in Munich or Fast 44. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, so that's yeah. how I, I came up with the name. Uh, and also, I think now that you've explained that to me, I think that's um, part of, like, I, we just met that night. But I think that's also part of you as a person, that you are very inviting. And you, you do tend to uh, move away from that sort of highbrow, you know, elitist type thing that art is. It seems that you really have brought that into the flavor of the gallery, even the carpet on the floor, you know. I noticed when I came in, it's very nice. You know? Yeah. And in Dublin, there's a gallery, I'm from Dublin, in Ireland, called the Hugh Lane Art Gallery. And um, when I went in there, I, I looked at um, Francis Bacon's room where he was, where he used to create his art and it was like chaos, you know. Is, is the aesthetic of this something, because it's so nice, is, have you really thought through the aesthetic or that's just part of you as a person? Because it seems to be, it's beautiful the way it's been. No, I mean, you know, if you go to look at uh, my places of business, so my first part of my career, uh -huh. I was in the entertainment business as well. Mm, mm. And I worked in TV and I worked in movies. Mm -hmm. And I was on studio lots. Oh, okay. And I, during my lunch break, I, I'd walk through and, and the movies would be, um, you know, on their lunch breaks, mm. everybody would go to lunch and they leave the doors open, the mm. big doors. And I'd walk through the stages and look at the, oh, the wow. sets and, I studied a, f a lot of film in college, and I, I, I always loved set design mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. creating a world that transports people to a different place. Like if you look at my cigar lounges here in town, mm -hmm. they have all, you know, they're like set pieces. Wow. And I used to have a lot of small stores in, uh, hotels along the strip and everyone would have a different theme and I made it like a movie set mm. and so for the amount of time you were in that space mm -hmm. you were out of the you know sensory overload and chaos of Las Vegas strip life yeah, yeah. so and, and that's kind of what I wanted to do here is a refuge uh, for people to come into and like they walk in and they go, oh, I feel like I'm in New York, like at a yes. Chelsea uh, yeah. gallery, although this is bigger than most of the ones I go to. It's definitely bigger, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it, 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 it's, 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 to me it's like a set piece uh, for your eyes and soul. Well, it's very beautiful, you know? Yeah. I, and that's why photography is so easy, you know? Yeah. You don't have to think about it. You just come in. Everybody takes pictures on their iPhone mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Android, and um, so they can relate to it. It's not like they have to think about brush strokes and composition and color and technical aspects. It's it's a photograph. Do you like it? Okay. Yeah. Great. Can I afford it? Yeah. Great. Buy it. Right. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. I recently got in Los Angeles, I was able to see uh, Bob Kane's original collection yeah. of all of his original Oh, that drawings. must have been amazing. Um, and he's passed on, but his, his yeah. wife is, is sick at the moment, um, but I was lucky enough to be able to just, I was absolutely blown away by the um, technical brilliance of of some of these people who worked in the movies. They also had him on as the um, creative consultant for one of the Batman movies. But um, I was talking to the, the curator and the conservator of the, of the pieces and he said something to me that really stuck in, his, in my mind was that these guys started off with nothing. 
like financially. Just, just, just drawing yeah. away. And it seems to me now the art and photography world has become very, at the top, quite controlled or quite convoluted. Or tra Do you think it's still hard for ordinary people to be able to buy a photograph that they can afford now? Or it's become literally, you know, priced out of the, you know? No, I mean, again, there's so many sites okay. that you can go on to like even you know photography on first dibs mm -hmm. you could find stuff inexpensive that's really nice um, artsy artnet I mean there's so many sites uh, and you can find stuff it, 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 it's, it's not difficult so uh, I mean you can I mean I've bought great photographs for two hundred dollars right. okay right. You know, that's uh, one and a half tanks of gas now. Yes. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, so there's no If, if, if you, you buy an electric car, you <laughs> could buy a <laughs> photograph every time you yeah, fill up because you save that money. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, and, and, that, and, and the other thing that's great about photography mm -hmm. is you can, I mean, if you spend some money on a piece. Mm -hmm. You can buy a piece where another one in that edition is hanging up in the Metropolitan Museum yeah, in New right. York yeah. or the MoMA or at any museum. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't do that with paintings. Yes. You know, um, th there's two pieces by Louis Stettner up at the fr by the front by the door front of this door, show. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen two of like the eight are in museums. Mm -hmm. You know, the addition mm -hmm. of eight are in museums. So my, a friend of mine bought the piece here and he has a piece that's in two other museums. And you can't do that with paintings. The accessibility yeah. of uh, photography. I mean, paintings are one of, but I'm just yeah. saying a painting, okay, an artist did 10 in a show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you could have one of those 10, but mm -hmm. at least here you can buy something at a reasonable price that's hanging in a museum somewhere in the world. That's what's great about photography. And is this something that you've cultivated as well with your family members, or it's just basically a solo passion of yours? Uh, no, I've, I mean, I, I have a large extended family mm -hmm. and, um, a couple uh, buy pieces. Uh, I'm the one that's primarily into photography, but I have an older stepbrother uh, who collected a lot through the years, mm -hmm. and uh, he's the one. He's one of the people who influenced me in life uh, to get passionate about art. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, he's got a really nice collection of stuff and uh, you know a couple other of his contemporaries that are slightly older than me and you know that I've you know I grew up in Vegas so I, I, I used to know everybody now there's about 2.4 million people <laughs> I, I don't know yeah it's it's such a transient city it changes you know yeah when That's I so moved cool. here as a baby I, I think the population was just under a hundred thousand oh, wow. yeah wow. so uh, but you know, there, there are people in town that even back then when I was a teenager, you know, were into art and, um, you know, buying for collections for corporations here. And, you know, I'd go on trips with them and it, it, it was exciting and it always stayed exciting, you know, to me. Well, Michael, thank you very much for giving us an, an eye into your world at FAS 44. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot.